Oh, you got the man. Good evening, parents, Superintendent Daly, Chairman Buckley, members of the class of 2022. As principal, I am very proud to welcome you all to the 65th 
commencement exercises for North Reading High School. Allow me to offer my sincere thanks to the custodial staff, the cafeteria crew, the administrative assistance team, the faculty, the district administration, and our parent community. Special thanks to the class advisors, Ms. Gagnon, Mr. McIntosh. I know you were in good hands. And a special thanks to Ms. Boggs, your yearbook advisor. Her and her team certainly delivered a very fine finished product. And they should be proud of their hard work. As I look out this evening, I'm getting a bit of a nostalgic vibe. Kind of like feels like uh, being back in an old green faded sweatshirt. But to begin, I'd like to share that my starter word is usually raise. And I didn't get that off Google. R-A-I-S-E, moving through flashes of gray, green, and gold tiles. Sometimes I use youth, but it depends on the most recent answers, but mostly it's raise. In October of 2021, Josh Wardle, a software engineer from Brooklyn, New York, started Wardle and is now published in 64 languages and has many millions of users. Some quick research on the game's success will tell you that Wordle is credited with boosting brain stimulation, fostering a sense of belonging, and getting its players reconnected with vocabulary. How many of us have maybe completed the puzzle on one day and quietly said, oh, that's, that's a word. I haven't seen that in a while. Did Josh Wardle just hit the lottery? Did he buy the one single $100 million scratch ticket? Or did he simply give people what they needed at the time? We can always look at movie releases and entertainment trends to identify themes of escapism or resentment or hope. It can be alien invasion thrillers, government corruption dramas, espionage capers, summer blockbusters, sequels, prequels, spin-offs, and that's not even including the Netflix stuff. So kind of like escapism to order. Look at a society's art and you'll know what's happening in that time. So I posit that there is more to this wordle thing than first meets the eye. The class of 2022 is no stranger to words and meaning. As sophomores, you were thrust into remote learning. Truly a first time for everything and everyone. By junior year, you were learning in a hybrid model. You were in a cohort. And every step along the way, you coped, you adapted, and you endured. And now as seniors, you've returned full in-person learning, full in-person graduation. And I am very proud to tell you, you did a great job. It looks really good on you. But hybrid, remote, cohort, in-person, these are not words that are typically identified as foundational elements of the public school experience. But nevertheless, these words had meaning, and we all embraced that meaning, and we acted on that meaning. Counter that, if you will, with George Orwell's anti-utopian masterpiece, 1984, published in 1949. You recall, and I know you do, that Newspeak was designed to diminish the range of thought. The context of the book, I'm sorry, in the context of the book, Newspeak was used by Big Brother as a form of control that was as subtle as a speeding freight train. Orwell was not, Orwell was sure not to allow readers to easily dismiss this element of his work. The whole portion at the end of the text is dedicated to Newspeak and its structure. A quick perusal of the A vocabulary provides a basic framework. The A vocabulary is used for everyday life. It has been whittled down to a small number of words, rigidly defined, and with all ambiguities and shades of meaning purged out of them. Warm becomes uncold. Characters say ungood instead of bad. Plus ungood for really bad. And double plus ungood for truly awful. By definition, Newspeak was intended not only to shape thought, 
but to make all other modes of thought impossible. Could there be anything more sinister, more terrifying, fewer words, fewer thoughts? Your high school educational experience is a small but powerful example of this antithesis. Remote, hybrid, blended learning, newer concepts leading to new ideas and new approaches. You have witnessed the power of words. But more than this, you've embraced the power of words. Your success and accomplishments not only prove that, they affirm it. State championships, national recognition, professional venues, you have excelled. And the accolades are well-deserved. But as a very dear friend, a fellow educator, fellow administrator, actually, retiring administrator, actually, would say right about now, but what about your character? Well, I think you excel there as well. You have kept this central theme at your core. And could there really be anything more important? Our own awareness that words ripen and mature to ideas, and ideas motivate to action, and action can lead to change. And yes, these simple truths undoubtedly shaped your character. I have all the confidence that every dedicated faculty member seated here behind me has been a servant, a guide, a coach, or a mentor to your learning. I've seen them in action. But we know that learning is a dynamic process, and your contributions to your own learning and growth are duly noted. I also believe that you are innately aware of this increasing relevance of words. Similarly, I have seen you in action. You are out there reminding us about words like activism and community and voice, and advocacy. You've been there allowing educators to embrace along with you terms like culturally responsive teaching and inclusion. I will also share that some of you have ensured that teachers and administrators are very connected to terms like challenge and patience and exasperated. But seriously, I have seen it time and again that the voice that you employ with reason and thought, the community that you create to allow others to thrive, and the actions that you have undertaken to move beyond tolerance to acceptance. Remarkable. And what I'm most reminded about this evening is something that at times I can lose in the forest for the trees. As the class of 2022, you have progressed through your education at North Reading High School, not taking so much from us, but leaving for us. And you have certainly left us better for it. I wish you all the best, and you have my sincere congratulations. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our superintendent of schools, Dr. Patrick Daly. Thank you, Mr. LaPrette. <clears throat> Good evening, students and families of the class of 2022. I'm honored to be with you this evening celebrating success as we come to the end of this incredible journey after this wonderful week of events and celebrations. I'm so happy that you've been able to have a year with so many events, competitions, and performances slowly returning to normal, and that our graduation ceremony is taking place in our traditional format. This year, I've been fortunate to have been able to attend and watch so many games and performances, to watch you step onto Gillette Stadium, the floor of the Boston Garden, and a Broadway stage. It's been an incredible journey, and we are all so proud to be here with you tonight to celebrate. As always, I would like to thank a great many people who have worked so hard to make this ceremony possible. To begin with, I thank the parents, guardians, and caregivers who have raised such wonderful and caring young people. We truly have brilliant, creative, skilled, and talented individuals receiving their diplomas this evening, but above all else, they are amazing people who are going to make a positive difference in our world. To Mr. LaPred and Mr. Hain and our senior advisors who have invested so many hours into the planning of our senior events and our graduation ceremony, I give many thanks. I know that they've been out nearly every night this spring at the prom, ceremonies, concerts, and playoff games, and they are present because they truly care about each student at North Reading High School. 
I've had the pleasure of knowing Mr. Hain for several years, but over the course of these most recent weeks, I've learned so much more about him through his stories and speeches that he has shared with all of our students and community. It was an honor seeing that great tribute to him and our students in the gymnasium, and I hope he understands just how much of an impact he has made on everyone here in our school community. Joe, you will be missed. This has been another incredible year, and I want to thank our nurses, the CIC health team, and all our elected officials and town leaders who have met regularly with me to help keep our students and staff safe, our classrooms open, and our events able to resume in the traditional way. To our teachers, counselors, and staff who have shared their passion for learning with our students over the years, I give my sincere gratitude. To our administrative team, many of whom work behind the scenes, thank you for many hours of planning and support. To our custodians, food service, paraprofessionals, bus drivers, administrative assistants, coaches, and others who have played a role in our graduates to where they are today, I give my thanks. To Mr. Buckley and the members of our school committee, thank you for the many hours you give to our students to guide the policy and financial decisions of our district. Earlier this week, I had the pleasure of attending the Paul McCartney concert at Fenway Park with my family, which led me to think about sharing some lessons we could all learn from the Beatles with our graduates tonight. First is put in your 10,000 hours. You may be familiar with Malcolm Gladwell's theory of the 10,000 hour rule from his 2008 book, Outliers. The theory is that the stories we hear about overnight success and rags to riches are myths, and those that rise to the level of accomplishment all have in common that they develop their talent because they put in the time and effort. To achieve their success, the Beatles, John, Paul, George, and Ringo, played over 1,200 shows in Hamburg, Germany in the early 1960s and worked on their performance and act in those early years so that when it came time to take the stage in those ma matching suits with the mop top haircuts, they had already polished their performance and were prepared for that level of success. All of the time that you've spent on the athletic fields, in the performing arts centers, researching in the library on your Chromebooks, and reading and completing those homework assignments are all deposits into your account. Over the next several years, you will continue to put in the time to develop your talents and passions into the skills and abilities that will lead you to success. Take advantage of learning from anyone who will teach you and provide you with feedback. Capitalize on those opportunities and never lose hope. When the Beatles were working in those small clubs in Germany and it looked like they were going nowhere, John would rally the group by saying, where are we going, fellas? And they'd say, to the top, Johnny. And he'd say, where's that, fellas? And they'd say, to the toppermost of the poppermost. Put in your 10,000 hours and believe that you can accomplish great things when you invest the time and effort. The power of collaboration. Remember that you can't do it alone. What I've always believed made the Fab Four great was they had a balance in the group and everyone could have a favorite Beatle. Early on, John and Paul wrote and took the lead vocals on most of the songs, but as they evolved, Ringo started singing on the records and George wrote and performed some of their biggest hits. Seek out those people who push you to be better and who challenge you to achieve at the next level. Surround yourself with those who inspire you, who motivate you, who have something to teach you. All you need is love. Always remember that there is more that unites us than divides us. You're entering a world full of arguments and debates and it's important for you to stay true to your core values and always defend and stand up for what is right and what you believe in. But also remember that you have a lot in common with that person across the aisle, and it's so important that you listen and learn to develop empathy. As you face challenges in the years ahead, it will be important that you can return to those places and people that you love. Take the time to truly realize those people, places, and activities in your life that you love and make sure you return to them every day. Success is not about making the most money or having the biggest house or the newest car. It's about having time to spend with your friends and family and making time for yourself to enjoy the sports, games, and activities that make life worth living. Go Celtics. Embrace creativity. Earlier this year, I was able to watch Peter Jackson's Get Back film and saw the most amazing moments of creation where a song blossomed from an idea into the hooks and melody of the iconic anthem we know and love in a period of about 90 seconds. I've had the pleasure over the years in North Reading watching so many of your creative expressions through our art shows, talent shows, concerts, and performances. I hope that you all continue to make the time to develop those skills that you've worked on and be creative. Publish those poems, share those stories, jump on stage at an open mic night, keep drawing, painting, and taking photographs. Fill our world with your creative energy and spirit. Don't be afraid to do something no one else has ever done. The Beatles were the first to have a concert in a stadium, to record feedback on a record, to use a sitar in a rock song, to use video clips for publicity. 
Hey Jude was the first song that was over seven minutes long to go to number one. I know that we're going to see some amazing things from members of this graduating class, but in order for this to happen, you're going to have to take some chances to put yourself out there and not be afraid of failure. You may also find that you will change with the times, and so you should adjust, but stay true to who you are. And finally, spend time with your loved ones. A few years ago, my 79-year-old father told me that the one concert he'd ever be interested in attending would be Paul McCartney. And so I kept that in mind, and when tickets went on sale, I decided to jump in head first. Now my father is not one for the crowds and it was a bit of a challenge in getting him in and out of the park and I had to remind him at least twice that the guy on stage was a few months older than he is. But we had a great time and made a memory that evening that will last a lifetime. Honor your parents, guardians and caregivers. Make memories. Think ahead to the future. Right now it may seem that they are the people in your life setting the rules and keeping you safe. And some of you may be champing at the bit to move to college or start your new job. But starting this evening, take that time to thank your family and spend time with them. In a few years, you will get to know the adults who raised you in a different way, and you will cherish all the time you have with them. Take the time to celebrate your great accomplishments. We spend so much of our lives racing ahead to the next thing, the next place, the next job or appointment. Enjoy this moment and all you have accomplished in your time here at North Reading High School, and seek out opportunities to enjoy life with your family and friends. This is the foundation that, will st that you will stand upon in the years to come. Be well, and God bless you. May you find great joy and true success as you make your way to the toppermost of the poppermost.
Tremendous. Thank you. Well done. Well done. It is now my pleasure to introduce our first honor essayist, Stephanie Stringer. Before I begin my speech, I'd like to make an apology to my grandfather, who I know is very disappointed in me right now, because by graduating number three in my class, I think I finally proved that I am not the smartest person in all of North Reading. <laughs> when I was a little girl, my sister and I often played the game of pretend school. Because Carly is three years older, and thus three years wiser, she would always play the role of the teacher, and I would be her humble student. Most children who play this game cater the lessons they teach to the ability and knowledge level of the student. But Carly did not like playing the game this way. Instead, Carly would teach me exclusively the most difficult material she was learning in school. So by the time I was in kindergarten, my sister had me doing multi-digit multiplication and long division, math topics far too advanced for the average six-year-old. Nevertheless, Carly continued to push me further and further, putting my kindergarten brain to the test. Although I did not always grasp these concepts, through this experience, Carly taught me a very valuable lesson about hard work and determination that I've carried around with me my whole life. With this memory being a core childhood memory, being defined as an overachiever has become a central part of who I am, both as a student and a person. When I was in seventh grade, my older brother graduated high school. I vividly remember the honors essayist that spoke at the ceremony and I remember thinking about what a unique experience it must have been to stand at this podium I am at now and speak about their high school experience. And so, five years before I would graduate from high school, I set a goal to earn that unique experience for myself. I meticulously planned out what classes I would take and pushed myself incredibly hard to get the grades I needed to obtain a GPA that would put me in the top three. Four years of blood, sweat, and tears later, I succeeded. I consider this one of my greatest accomplishments, and I like to believe that it was my sister's game of school that we played when I was six years old that taught me what pushing yourself looked like that eventually got me here. However, the point I wish to get across to you all tonight is not that hard work and determination will allow you to achieve all your dreams, because I know each and every one of you have heard that advice at least a million times. It is crucial to set goals for yourself, but it's equally important that you do not let your efforts in striving towards those goals become a burden to your sanity. All throughout high school, I believed pushing myself to my absolute limit was setting me up for success. What I was actually setting myself for, up for was complete obsession. Obsession with my academic performance and obsession with how others viewed me. My constant strive towards a perfect GPA and signing myself up for only the most challenging classes offered became the most con time consuming and stressful part of my life. Going into senior year, the pressure I was putting on myself was so clear to others that during parent-teacher conferences, multiple of my teachers felt it was necessary to inform my mother that they were concerned about my stress level. About halfway through the year, one of my teachers even took it upon himself to scold me over email for my complete and utter obsession. I wish I could say that at this point I reevaluated my priorities, but that is simply not who I am, nor will it likely ever be. Although I so desperately wanted to not care about my grades so that I could have time to enjoy my high school years, the thought of losing the part of myself that I valued more than anything else, being seen as smart, was unbearable. When you go your whole life being defined by others and by yourself as academically overachieving, anything less than perfection in your grades feels devastating. In retrospect, it feels silly to have believed for so long that the only thing that mattered in my life was excelling in school. I will not say I regret all the days and nights I spent over letter grades and due dates, because that would be a lie. I am so proud of my accomplishments, I know I would have never gotten here to where I am now without the fire of stress burning underneath me at all times. However, I will say I wish I paid a little closer attention to the more important things in life. Spending time with and being there for my friends, keeping up to date with the world around me, cherishing every moment of my last cross country season and my last year at my dance studio and realizing how soon I'd be leaving the place I grew up and the people I love. As we begin to encounter our next endeavors, whether that be furthering your education in college, joining the workforce, or whatever else you may have planned, I hope you have aspirations to strive towards and the intention of fulfillment in your life. But I hope you seek out your definition of triumph in a way that does not devour your mind, soul, and sanity. 
I hope you'll leave room in your life to live in the moment and appreciate what you have to live for. I've learned that it's all about balance and I hope we all find it. Thank you. It is my pleasure to now introduce the next honors essayist, Adam Bacher. Good morning, North Reading High School. Today is Friday, June 10th. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. You guys can stay sitting, it's all good. I know many of you are sick of hearing my voice every day, but please bear with me for a few minutes. I'll do my best to get us out before the tip off. Anyway, I wanted to start by telling a brief story. A few weeks ago, I was walking through the halls when I ran into Mr. Johnson. We talked for a few minutes about the upcoming baseball tournament and my future, among other things. Before we parted ways, he held his hand out, looked me in the eyes, and said thank you for being a hornet. After shaking his hand, I continued on my way to my next class. As I took this stroll, I thought about his comment, reflecting on my four years at the high school and asking myself, what does it mean to be a hornet? Today, I'm here to answer that question because being a hornet means so much more than not wasting 50,000 per year for private school. <laughs> to start, being a hornet means putting in the work all day, every day. In the classroom, we have consistently gone above and beyond to reap the benefits when our grades close. One example of this comes to our mind in our first year typing class when Mr. Big Matt DeVecchia made an assignment in which we had to plan an event by creating a simple calendar. However, a couple of my buddies and I took this project to the next level. We wrote a novel's worth of information about a birthday party for one of our other friends listing each event of the party down to the minute, of course, banning explicit material, and developing a fascinating family background story. Rumor has it that Mr. DeVecchia still uses Bakey's birthday bash as an example for this project. What's even more impressive is that so many of us Hornets proudly carry the same work ethic with us beyond the classroom and into our extracurricular activities. Our performing arts organizations, like Notorious, Band, and Maskers, often rehearse for more than five hours each day, leading to standout performances at the local, regional, and national levels. Our Hornet athletes spend hours at every athletic venue, from Kasabuski Arena to our beloved Cary Park, for more than five days each week. As a result, multiple teams have brought back hardware to the trophy cases to show for their efforts. Today, not only did we make it to our graduation, but we Hornets put in the extra effort to earn incredible opportunities across the country to further our education, from Boston to Kentucky, all the way to LA. Being a Hornet also means taking your mistakes and using them to better ourselves. I want everyone to recall their freshman year for a moment and reflect upon their worst mistake. From wearing neon green shorts to school every day or forgetting to charge our Chromebooks the night before an important assignment was due, I know that we have learned from our mistake, or from our errors and vastly improved ourselves since then. I don't remember half of the idiotic things I did in Mrs. Campos' freshman US history classroom. Whether carrying another student on my shoulders around the class or calling Andrew Jackson an anti-vaxxer in the middle of a debate, I was the definition of a toxic freshman. After receiving a failing grade on this debate, which was graded on participation, I sprinted to Mrs. Campos' power block and begged for extra credit. Her warranted response was something along the lines of, if you want to do better in the class, you need to grow the heck up. Mistake noted. From that day on, I have worked tirelessly to keep my unruly side in check, which has made me a more mature, focused, and respectful student, except when I'm in the same class as Jack Fisher. Sorry, Mr. Roasting. Looking around this club, we have made so many strides since our freshman year. I can't believe I'm saying this, but by constantly attempting to fix our mistakes, we have matured from being Fortnite kids into functioning members of society. If we continue to embrace this Hornet way throughout the next four years and beyond, no one will be able to stop us. Last, but certainly not least, being a Hornet means finding a way to overcome adversity. I know that every one of us sitting on this field has faced some adversity, 
whether it be something as small as losing a game or something as challenging as losing a loved one. I'm sure everyone here remembers our experience during COVID. The anxiety, the canceled live events and sports seasons, and the infamous Zoom classes. When we had every reason to give up, we responded proudly, making efforts to connect with our loved ones, keeping up with our schoolworks, and showing up to Mr. Kinnery's online meetings wearing scarves and Santa hats. Because of our drive to conquer the challenges of the pandemic, we took the world by storm the moment we walked back into the school the following year. But what also sets the Hornets apart from everyone else is, that the, way we, is the way we respond to adversity together. Not only do we seek to pick ourselves up when we're down, but we also help our peers to overcome obstacles that they may face. I know many people here remember the Nantucket incident. On our first football scrimmage, a mere eight days into the season, I took a hit to the head and sustained the concussion that would sideline me for the rest of the year. The injury not only spoiled my senior season, but it rocked my entire world. Time after time, I found myself unable to perform simple tasks, reading and writing, walking in a straight line, and even getting out of bed in the morning. As my symptoms raged on, I fell completely out of touch with the academic, athletic, and social aspects of my life before the injury, leaving me confused, frustrated, and often hopeless. While I didn't think that I would overcome my struggles, so many hornets around me swarmed to help me get back on my feet, and I can't thank them enough. I want to thank everyone in the high school support staff, like Ms. Tropiano and Mr. Deloy, for checking in with me every day and never, never giving me more work than I could handle. I also want to thank Ms. Jolie Barrett and the four knuckleheads in the back of my anatomy class for keeping me laughing even when I found it hard to crack a smile. Finally, I want to thank my guys on the team that made a run to, to the Super Bowl for giving me something to look forward to in one of the darkest times of my life. The people I just mentioned and so many others gave me the resiliency I needed to confront the adversity I faced head on, literally, and are a massive reason why I'm so proud to call myself a North Reading Hornet. So, what does it mean to be a Hornet? In short, it means going the extra mile, learning from your mistakes, and overcoming adversity both on your own and with the help of others. Wherever life may take us, the things we learned at North Reading High School will make being a Hornet a permanent part of our identities. My experience as a Hornet resonated with me so much that I'm spending the next four years at a college that directly ripped off our logo and not the other way around. The world may overlook our small graduating class, but I'm confident that we will set ourselves apart by embracing what it means to be a Hornet. I don't know when, where, or how just yet, but I do know one thing that Hornet Nation will shock the nation. Thank you, everyone, and have a fantastic Friday. I would now like to introduce our final honor essayist, Shivani Srikanth. Hello everyone, I'm honored and excited to be standing here as your top scholar addressing you all. It's nostalgic to see teachers that I haven't seen in years and to reminisce on the friendships that I've formed over the decade that I've been in this town. Congratulations to my fellow students graduating, to those who felt like this day couldn't come quickly enough, and to those who wanted to slow down time and bask in the last vestiges of high school. For me, I embody the latter somebody who isn't really ready to let go of my parents, too afraid to see the dying embers of my childhood fizzle out completely. I don't think I'm alone in this feeling, although everyone I speak to seems almost too excited to leave high school behind. But in the years that I've spent in this town, I've found myself increasingly reluctant to move on. As I wrote this speech, I wondered why I felt such a deep connection to this community, why I care so much about leaving it behind. It became clear very quickly. The people we are today, graduates headed off to college or the workforce or the military, have been shaped inexplicably by the people in this community. Like a weather-worn footpath, our personalities and our passions have been slowly formed by the people who have walked alongside us. For me, 
It's Mr. Lynch in third grade who taught me how to cook in the little school kitchen before class and encouraged me to make friends in an unfamiliar school. Or it's Mr. Roof, whose pop quizzes and tests made his students double over in pain, but whose no-nonsense approach to teaching made me fall in love with history. It's Mr. Nosey, whose snarky commentary over my overuse of adverbs made me a better writer. Or it's Mr. Emerton, who would let me stay after school to discuss everything from JFK's assassination and aliens to W.E.B. Du Bois and racial justice. Ms. Kerrigan, whose AP environmental science class helped me decide my major. It's Mr. Dorval, who accepted my calculus homework on a napkin when I lost my notebook. And after all of his teasing and sarcastic remarks, still sat with me for two hours to help me make a college decision. It's Mr. Lepret, who grudgingly let me turn in my final draft for this speech just a couple days ago, more than a few weeks late. Our teachers, friends, coaches, and mentors have left little pieces of themselves within us, mineral deposits that will shine through wherever we go. Their life experiences have bled into ours, and wherever you're off to next year, you'll carry fragments of North Reading and its people with you. Of course, to truly be part of a community, you must impact it as much as it has impacted you. And I discovered that in the many ways that North Reading has shaped me and my childhood, it has also allowed me to influence it back, although sometimes reluctantly. The work my friends and I have done in this community to push racial liberation and social justice has given us a purpose in this town. We've been afforded the opportunity to form deep connections with the people here, those who support us in our endeavors to change our community for the better. Battling the voices in North Reading that speak out against diversity and instead uplifting minorities is the way in which we've chosen to become entrenched in this town. But we are not alone. Each one of you here today has something that ties you deeply to our community. Whether you volunteer in youth sports, chair school events, hug your friends and family often, or even if you just work tirelessly to keep your head above the choppy waters of high school. Without a doubt, I can say that as a class, we have left North Reading better than we found it. Perhaps from all of this, there's a central message that I'll keep in my heart as I go off to college, and that I implore everyone here to keep in mind as well. In our everlasting search to understand ourselves and make an impact, the most grounding thing we can have is a supportive community. Whether that's a club in which you discover your identity, a platform where you develop political views, or even just a close friend you can confide in. The most important thing is to find a community receptive to change, but one that will also change you for the better. I'll be honest, it wasn't always easy for me to push through the noise in North Reading to explore my own identity as a student of color, but I truly believe that the class of 2022 has made our sometimes narrow-minded town safer for students who might feel alone. Before I finish off the speech and graduate with the rest of you, I want to thank my family and friends for being the core of my community, my grandparents who are here from India to see me graduate, and my parents who've always encouraged me to step outside the box and chase my passions, as extreme or unrealistic as they may seem. Congratulations to all of you again for the impacts you've made in North Reading and the ways in which you've grown. I'm excited to see what we all accomplish even if it's just finding ourselves. Thank you.
now my pleasure to introduce your class essayist, Caroline Pecora. If I could travel back to 2013 and tell my family, I would be giving a speech on graduation day. They would laugh at the thought. When I was 10 years old, exuberance was something I saved for home. Yes, it might be unbelievable to those that know me well, but there was a time when I was reserved. It was the end of elementary school, specifically June of 2015, when I started to come out of my shell. I landed the role of Mrs. Potts in the little school's production of Beauty and the Beast, meaning I had to stand on stage and not only act, but sing an entire song by myself. It was certainly something out of my comfort zone. I had never acted nor sang in front of a crowd before. But Mr. Tatro, the little school music teacher, believed in me. He encouraged me when I had little faith in myself. Because of him, I got up on stage and sang what I still imagine was a beautiful solo. But more importantly, I shocked a crowd of people, myself included, who were oblivious to this other side of me. So, to Mr. Tatro, thank you for initiating this change in me, which allowed me to become who I am today. Surely, without your help, I wouldn't be the class essayist. I regret to inform you that my theater career ended the same night it took off. But that wasn't the point of my fifth grade journey of self-discovery. I learned that I'm invincible. I could do anything I set my mind to. I developed a sense of confidence to a degree unknown to me. As I transitioned to middle school, I began raising my hand more frequently and participating in extracurriculars like peer leaders. I continued to push myself as I moved into high school, experimenting with the wide variety of clubs and discovering where my interests lie. It turns out I have a strong affinity for writing, but calculating equilibrium constants of chemical equations is not my strong suit. Sorry, Mr. Kennery. <laughs> I share this anecdote with you all today to contextualize the most important thing I've learned these past 13 years. Step out of your comfort zone. To those who have a few more years before it's your turn to sit on this field, write for the deliberator. Mr. McCarthy would love to have you on staff. Try out Ultimate Frisbee. Submit that job application. Raise your hand even if you're unsure of the answer. I don't think I can emphasize enough that this is the time of your life, right now. So make the most of your high school experience. Stop being scared to try something new. I wouldn't have known I liked snowboarding if I didn't give it a try. And do you know how many times I came home covered in black and blue? But you have to get bruises to improve. The same lesson goes for education. Who cares if you raise your hand to tell the class that three squared equals six? That's how you learn. Escape judgment, make mistakes. As Mr. Putnam says, it's just high school, you're all teenagers, who really cares? The place you graduated in or the number of APs you took or varsity letters are just numbers. What's important is that you figured out who you are in the world and what you stand for. And that's something lasting about yourself, not a silly number. And Moby Dick rules, but we have different opinions on that last part. My fellow graduates, this encouragement of mine doesn't exclude you. As you move on from North Harding High School, continue to explore the world around you. Grasp even the most outlandish opportunities. Join the beekeepers club at your new college. Sign up for a glass blowing class. Protest something. Meet new people and make new friends. Emerge from your shell. It's not too late to learn what interests you. Who knows? Maybe you're an expert at free solo rock climbing. But you'll never know if you don't push your boundaries. The adults don't get a pass on my message either, even if you're all much wiser and more experienced than a soon-to-be high school graduate. I understand your plate fills as you get older, taking time away to engage in hobbies. 
let alone discovering new ones. But if an opportunity presents itself, take it. And know that it's natural not to master something the first try. Adults make mistakes too. The phrase, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, doesn't ring true. My parents, who have supported my carefree spirit and taught me the value of persistence, have proven this a fallacy. Friends, as you make the strides to receive your diplomas this evening, promise yourselves that wherever you go, you will test your limits. Don't waste time missing chances. You're invincible. You have the whole world waiting for you. Explore, discover, and conquer. Thank you. Great message, Caroline. Thank you. It's now my privilege to introduce the class of 2022 scholarship winners. Please join me in congratulating them this evening. I would ask that the recipient please stand when their name is called. I want to make a point to thank the community for its generosity in making these scholarships possible. The Andover Sportsman's Club Scholarships. Riley Cullen, Kayla Imbriano. The Barbara E. Aylward Memorial Scholarship, Samantha Magner. The James R. Aylward Memorial Scholarship, Jacqueline Magner. The Teddy Balkand Memorial Scholarship, sponsored by the North Reading High School's Boys Ice Hockey Boosters. Andrew Daly. Nettie, Nettie O.E. Barrasso and Mary Barrasso Memorial Scholarships, Wesley Fisher, Stephanie Stringer. Arthur A. Barese Memorial Scholarship, Leah Damfus. L.D. Batchelder School Scholarships. Spencer Bean, Kira Lord. The Joseph R. Bernard Memorial Scholarship, Patrick Tanyan. Paul Buckley Memorial Scholarship, sponsored by the North Reading High School Boys Ice Hockey Boosters. Samuel Elliott. BNI. BIZ Builders Scholarship, Tyler Murphy. Alan Burgess Memorial Scholarship, Jack Fisher. Kristen M. Callahan Memorial Scholarship, Audrey Buckley. Chartwell's Nutrition Services Scholarships, Kayla Embriano, Rose Morelli. Eleanor C. Dell Scholarships Fund of 2014, Josephine Ferrante, Kathleen Leach, Caroline Schladenhofen, Shivani Srinkanth. Larry Dysart, North Reading Girls Youth Basketball Scholarship, Riley Cullen. Elks National Foundation Most Valuable Student Scholarship, Anthony Petrosino. The Nancy Ferretti Ipswich River Community Course Excellence in the Arts Scholarships, Wesley Fisher, John Priskin. Fitzgerald Prize for Community Service in Memory of Kelly and Roy Fitzgerald, Sophia Galupo. Betsy Gavoni Memorial Book Award, Kelly Crossan. Stephen Gregory Memorial Scholarship, Ryan McCullough. J.T. Hood Parent Association Scholarship, Gianna Nalavo. Hornet Scholar Awards, Aidan Nadeau, 
Cannon Schultz. Robert Hunt Memorial Scholarship, Matthew Ryan. David Jamison Memorial Scholarship, Rose Morelli. Frederick A. Kyes Memorial Scholarships, Ryan Baker, Ann McClellan. E. Ethel Little School PTO Scholarship, Lindsey Keller. Mr. and Mrs. Anthony J. LaPred Jr. Memorial Scholarships, John Jennings IV, Caroline Pecora. Martins Pond Community Pride Scholarship, Emily Sonia. Mighty Meredith Project Scholarships, Caroline Pecora, Landon Phillips, Kiernan Schulz. Walter Miller Scholarship, John Jennings IV. Michael Mitten Memorial Scholarship, Brett Schultz. Moynihan Lumber Scholarship, Amanda Sherman. Richard P. Murphy Memorial Scholarship, Christina Musgrave. Eric R. Nelson Memorial Scholarship, Edward McNeil IV. North Reading Education Association Scholarship, Lindsey Keller. North Reading Family Dentistry Scholarship, Sultana Sparlis. North Reading Girls Softball League Scholarships, Shivani Srinkanth. North Reading High School Boys Ice Hockey Booster Scholarship, Landon Phillips. North Reading High School Boys Lacrosse Boosters Scholarship, Joseph Collins. North Reading High School Class of 1966 Scholarship, Kayla Griffin. North Reading High School Parents Association Scholarship, Veronica Stancheva. North Reading Historical and Antiquarian Society Scholarship, Ava Tremontosi. North Reading Little League Scholarship, Phil Dardano President's Award, Jack Fisher. North Reading Little League Harold B. Reynolds Memorial Scholarship, Ryan Baker. North Reading Lodge of Masons Scholarships, Adam Barker, Nicole Steinmeier. North Reading Music Boosters Scholarships, Jason Chula, Wesley Fisher, Kathleen Leach, Edward McNeil IV, Christina Musgrave. North Reading Republican Town Committee Scholarship, Kyle O'Connell. North Reading Women of the Moose Scholarship, Landon Phillips. North Reading Youth Football and Cheerleading Scholarships, Liliana Acuna, Ryan Long. North Reading Youth Hockey Scholarships, Samuel Elliott, Lily Piscatelli. North Reading Youth Soccer Board of Directors Scholarship, Madison DiNapoli, Jacqueline Magner, Samantha Magner, Landon Phillips. <laughs> North Reading Youth Soccer Scholarship in memory of Janet Connolly O'Neill, Kiernan Schulz. <laughs> North Reading Youth Soccer Scholarship in memory of Peter Sapp, Alexander Carpenter. Kathleen O'Brien Artist Scholarship, Tyler Craig. Peabody Linfield North Reading Girls Co-op Ice Hockey Scholarship, Audrey Buckley. David Pothier Gold Medal Scholarship, Ryan Keller. Principals Future Leader Scholarship, Jenna Nolivo.
Robert Ramsdale Boys Youth Basketball Scholarships, Cody Catalonga, Quinn Reisenberg. <laughs> Reading Cooperative Bank Scholarship, Amy Ho. <laughs> Josephine Romeo Memorial Scholarship, Riley Cullen. <laughs> Edward A. Sapienza Scholarship, Daniel Oliveira. Jack Tan Memorial Scholarship, John Jennings IV. <laughs> Terrelli Born Scholarship Trust Fund, Lindsay Mills. <laughs> the J. E. Valade and Paul E. Buckley Scholarship for Altruism, Ryan Baker, Megan Slattery. <laughs> Helena Valenti, Memorial Scholarships, Madison DiNapoli, Gianna Spinale. <laughs> Sarah Valenti Memorial Scholarship, sponsored by North Reading Boys Lacrosse Boosters, Joseph Collins. <laughs> the Todd Verdonk Memorial Scholarship, sponsored by the Diamond Club, Ryan Baker. Wayne and Catherine Welsh Memorial Scholarship, Aidan Nadeau. <laughs> West Village Women's Club Scholarship Fund, Sultana Sparlis. <laughs> Again, sincere thanks to all the members of the community contributing to these scholarships. <laughs> and now we'll acknowledge those students receiving a scholarship from the North Reading Dollars for Scholars. And again, sincere thanks to that group for their hard work and their commitment to the members of the class. Please remain standing once your name is called. Spencer Bean, Luke Benneke, Audrey Buckley, Tyler Craig, Kelly Crossan, Riley Cullen, Leah Damfus, Madison DiNapoli, Melanie Pfeffer, Wesley Fisher, Sophia Galupo, Jordan Hemley, Kayla Imbriano, John Jennings IV, Fiona Lagore, Ben Benjamin Lloyd, excuse me, Benjamin Lloyd, Ryan Long, Robert Margosian, Emma Mini, Ella Montalione, Rose Morelli, Christina Musgrave, Gianna Nalavo, Daniel Oliveira, Caroline Pecora, Landon Phillips, Megan Slattery, Emily Sonia, Veronica Stancheva, Nicole Steinmeier, Casey Strangman. <laughs> North Reading Dollars for Scholars scholarship winners. Moving on to a very important part of our program right now. Superintendent Daly, Mr. Buckley, it has been my fortunate blessing to work with these students during middle school and all four years of their high school experience. And on behalf of the faculty and staff of North Reading High School, it is my great pleasure to present to you the following members of the class of 2022 who have satisfied the requirements of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the North Reading Public School System to receive their high school diplomas. Shivani Sheila Shrikant. Adam Lawrence Barker. Stephanie Lynn Stringer. Rose Antoinette Morelli.
Tyler Nicholas Craig. Caroline Susan Pecora. Luke Lawrence Benneke. Gianna Maria Nalavo. Megan Elizabeth Slattery. Michael Joseph Acola. Liliana Alicia Acuna. Nicholas Anthony Albano. Daniel Matthew Ancre. Ava Marie Akari. Brianna Marie Bailey. Justin Connor Bailey. Ryan Patrick Baker. Spencer David Bean. Lauren Elise Bedoya. Colin Irving Brown. Kyle George Bryant. Audrey Marie Buckley. Gina Rose Campana. Cody Joseph Canalanga. Alexander Urban Carpenter. Jack Andrew Carroll. Nico Joseph Santafante. Nicholas Paul Ciardello. Jason Stephen Chula. Colin Crawford Colbert. Joseph Edward Collins. Jason Henry Colucciello. Kelly Elizabeth Crossan. Riley May Cullen. Charlotte Nicole Cuneo. Andrew James Daly. Justin Walter George Daly. Leah Marie Damfus. Cassandra Mary De Christopher. Lauren Elizabeth D. Ariana Catherine Dello Icono. Alyssa Marie Dimitri. Madison Carol DiNapoli. Sophia Luisa Diorio. Daniela Rose Doolin. Nicholas William Doucette. Harlow James Duffley. 
Samuel Robert Elliott. Alana Marie Fallon. Melanie Mackenzie Pfeffer. Josephine Liana Ferrante. Jack Oliver Fisher. Wesley Thomas Fisher. Stephen Daniel Fleury. Haley Rose Foley. Kirsten Riley Fortin. Roxy Aletha Fulgham. Jared Farazani Gadri. Sophia Isabel Galupo. Sebastian Scott Gonzalez. Sadna Gopanath. Elizabeth Bing J. Grant. Dylan Thomas Griffin. Kayla Emma Griffin. Brooke Harrington. Zachary Franklin Heinz. Jordan Guerrero Hemley. Jessica Hayes Hill. Amy Ho. Annika Marie Howe. Zeng Yu Huang. Kayla Marie Imbriano. Elizabeth Grace Janisiewicz. John Joseph Jennings IV. Carissa Jones. Liam Michael Joyce. Lily Rachel Joyce. Lindsay Grace Keller. Ryan Victor Keller. Ewan McAllister Kennedy. John William Kennedy. Daniel Carter Kiley. Emma Jean Kylie. Eleni Kutsagianopoulos. Natalie Vlasta Kuchar. Kathleen Elizabeth Leach. Alexia Lachardi. Fiona McKay Ligor. Benjamin Christian Lloyd. Ryan Stephen Long. Kira Beringer Lord. Anne 
Christian McClellan. Megan Riley Madden. Jacqueline Patricia Magner. Samantha Claire Magner. Kaylee Fallon Manupelli. Drew Peter Manzi. Robert Vincent Margosian. Matthew Richard McBain. Timothy James McCarthy. Ryan James McCullough. Adriana Pasqualina McDonald. Brian Edward McKenna, Jr. Megan Ann McKinney. Abigail Sienna McLaughlin. Jared Walker McMahon. Edward James McNeil IV. Jacob Christopher Mikulski. Gavin Thomas Milligan. Lindsay Marie Mills. Emma Grace Minnie. Ella Marie Monteleone. Gina Rose Mulek. Daniel Joseph Murnane. Tyler John Murphy. Maxwell John Murray. Christina Marie Musgrave. Katie Ann Musgrave. Hannah Elizabeth Mayette. Aiden Michael John Nado. Amy Renee Norcom. Kyle Robert O'Connell. Casey Patrick O'Connor. Daniel Ralph Oliveira. Andrew Joseph Pepe. Michael Dominic Petito. Anthony Angelo Petrosino. Landon Jason Phillips. Nathaniel James Phillips. Lily Ann Piscatelli. Andrew Thomas Powell. John Joseph Pruskin. Trevor Philip Rabideau. Erin Marie Riccardi. Quinn Donald Burke Riesenberg. 
Isabel Estella Riley. <laughs> Dean Michael Rooney. <laughs> Matthew Edward Ryan. <laughs> Turfa Safraz. Erin Elizabeth Scanlon. Caroline Grace Schladenhofen. Brett Richard Schultz. Kiernan McKee Schultz. Amanda Lee Sherman. Aiden Matthew Shore. Aiden John Smith. Emily Marie Sonia. Gianna Rose Spinali. Veronica Sasheva Stancheva. Nicole Carol Steinmeier. Casey Jean Strangman. Ryan Christopher Supple. Patrick Joseph Tanian. <laughs> Allie Marie Taylor. <laughs> Jack Henry Terranova. <laughs> Ava Marie Tremontosi. Devin W. Tran. Sultana Saparlis. Devin Jonathan Tucker. Ryan Thomas Tyrell. Amanda Lauren Wold. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, families and friends, I present to you the graduates of North Reading High School class of 2022. Good afternoon, class of 2022. We class officers would like to congratulate you all for graduating this year. Despite all the adversity that our class has faced, all of you have managed to graduate. We wanted to thank you for your part in raising money for our class. Without you, raising money for our class gift would have been impossible. All of your participation, whether it be attending fundraisers or just buying food from the bake sales, has helped us raise the money we need to make the senior experience as best as possible. With these funds, the class will be gifting picnic tables for the front courtyard. We were grateful to kick off the outdoor lunch this year and hope that our gift will contribute to the senior experience of the future. 
The class of 2022 would like to humbly thank the faculty members of not only the high school where we will be ending our journey, but also of the middle and elementary schools. We give special thanks to Mr. Hain and Ms. Tallis who will be retiring this year. We are humbled to have spent our time at NRHS with your smiling faces. We would also like to thank our, our senior class advisors, Mr. McIntosh and Ms. Gagnon for the remarkable performance and allowing us to have a very memorable senior year. We also extend our gratitude to the ultimate unsung heroes, our parents. Thank you for every ride, every time you sat through a game or a performance, the snacks you bring to practice, putting up with every time we missed the bus or forgot a, a project until the night before, and of course, your undying love and support. We couldn't have done it without you. We have now reached the end of our ceremony, but there is still one more thing that we have to complete before we are officially graduates. Now it is time for a symbolic transition into our futures with the significant milestone of becoming a graduate. I ask you all to stand with me now, and on the count of three, flip our tassels from right to left. I want to congratulate everyone once again and say that I am so thankful to be graduating with you all today. Class of 2022, are we ready? <laughs> all right, let's do it. One, two, three. We're officially graduated! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>